Yes. Uh, I have a question for uh, the guy from the uh, Fiat Chrysler. And uh, you said that there was a drawback regarding the uh, cold start business. Um, isn't it so if you use uh, direct injection and if you use uh, pressure of uh, more than 200 bar, then there will be no issue? Please. So, uh, Jamie Turner in his work, he, he showed that it was actually easier to do cold stopping with methanol than with ethanol. So, Professor Jamie Turner, he showed in his research that it's easier to do cold stopping with methanol than with ethanol. Okay, but uh, is it a question or a statement? Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. That's allowed. This is, this is a, yes. Several people have mentioned that uh, it'd be fairly easy or with very minimal conversions, you could take a fully gasoline vehicle and convert it to diesel. Uh, so we're going to keep this even too quiet as before. Uh, <laughs> uh, several folks have mentioned that with a, a fair, fairly modest conversion, uh, not too expensive, that it would be possible to convert a gasoline vehicle over to a methanol uh, burning engine. Is there anyone working on a kind of off the shelf kit that seems for Use of this and be something that's fairly off the shelf that you can take out to your car and say, hey, put this on my vehicle. Um, has anybody worked on that or are you taking a partner to work on the kit? Michael, do you want to? Yes. Yes. <coughs> we, Fuel Freedom, is on. Yes. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Fuel Freedom uh, Foundation um, has, uh, we, it has, has done one conversion and we're in the process of doing a second conversion. Um, and the idea between, uh, the idea of these conversions was trying not to do necessarily a kit where you'd have to do hardware changes, you'd have to change injectors, um, or you'd have to change the fueling system, a lot like what you have to do with compressed natural gas vehicles. Uh, the idea was just to change the software in the ECU, the engine control module, which is a sort of a reflash of the software, so it's a very change of software. It's a very inexpensive operation. The expense is in certifying the vehicle, meeting the requirements of the regulatory agency. So, it, you know, the, the thought was once you kind of went through and did a couple of these conversion shows of feasibility, you would be able to amortize those costs over a large number of vehicles, which would drive down the costs of doing, uh, of operating that conversion as it needs to be offered. So there's, there's still a lot of questions. This was done on ethanol. Uh, presumably you could, if you do a, do a conversion from a gasoline only to a flex fuel <coughs> ethanol, uh, presumably because of the, the work by Turner and his colleagues, you could then take that to an M56, you could take that to methanol. Albeit, you'd have to worry about material compatibility, you'd have to worry about the vast emissions and performance of those vehicles. So, fuel freedom is showing that, hey, this is possible. Well, whether it be a commercial success or not, it is still to be proven. Good. Yes, Peter. I think that's, and I'll on Michael, I say that. 
um, I think they were caused by adjusting simply adjusting the software of the team uh, to try to deal sort of a effect is is is, is fantastic. But uh, the real thing we are seeing outside the law was the impossibility to have this new adjustment in the in the in the, in the system system to different farm because they will have to deal with the correlation. Yes, thank you, Peter. Yes. Yeah, it's me again. <laughs> I just had uh, a small comment to you, uh, Leslie. Very nice presentation. Um, and the uh, idea is actually something that Oldsmobile um, were working on back in the 1960s. So back in 1962, they made a car and also by uh, Jetfire Turbo Graphic V8 car uh, that was actually, you know, uh, on the roads and they produced, I don't know, 10,000 of this car, something like that. And it was one of the first cars with uh, a turbocharged uh, engine and uh, it was not really uh, running that well and therefore they showed off the market again. But at that time, they were actually commercializing the idea that you just presented. Two, two fuels is not totally new idea. Uh, in the case of the, uh, the automobile, they were actually injecting upstream of the turbo. The goal was to be uh, an inexpensive intercooler. Uh, with direct injection and with the with direct injection, uh, a modern and downside type of pressure ratio, uh, you can have much better operating vehicles uh, than, than those. Uh, they, have been concept vehicles that have actually been put together, uh, mostly by our partner Ford, uh, put together an F-150 utilizing this two fuel concept, demonstrating the 25% improvement in efficiency. Uh, they have yet, however, to make a decision as to whether or not they continue to introduction. But yes, see, two fuels is not terribly new. By the way, diesels utilize two fuels. Uh, if you consider the urea that you require as a secondary fuel, they actually utilize two, li two liquids. So two liquids in a vehicle is not, even today, is not a terribly new idea. No, I totally agree. And it's like, uh, even if you go further back, uh, the Germans during the Second World War and the Nazis made the engines, they used the methanol in order to, uh, to uh, you know, to, to attack the Allied forces when they were in dogfights for like up to five minutes in order to have extra power to climb deeper, to uh, fly faster and all that. So it's, it's new to uh, also find. Interesting that you mentioned because I'm familiar with the Allied forces were doing water injection for exactly the same purpose. <laughs> uh, well, for takeoff. <laughs> for takeoff, by all we know for the, for the Allied side, not for the German side. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Leslie, I have a, a question of uh, kind of pursuing, uh, expanding on your ideas of uh, octane boosting and uh, compression uh, CR increases. How, how far can you push the CR and not run into some knock limits? Uh, it's, it, it's interesting. Yes, I mentioned, I failed to mention that when that was in my other, yeah. uh, in my other presentation. Um, there are two knocks in this option. You can increase the turbo and downsize, or you can increase the compression ratio. Those two will actually give you to higher efficiencies. Our work, I think I have had some slides, tend to indicate that 11 and a half seems to be a good compression ratio. If you go higher than that, the efficiency gains <coughs> only beyond 11 and a half are low. The engine doesn't knock. Uh, the problem is that you're better off keeping 11 and a half and using the peak pressure. At this point, you're limited by peak cylinder pressure utilizing that uh, additional gain by keeping the compression ratio 11 and a half and downsizing further. We're thinking downsizing a two liter engine, a 2.4 liter engine to one liter. So more than a factor of two downsizing will give you a 30% improvement as opposed to the 25% improvement. But for that you need ethanol. Our work at MIT was on ethanol. Uh, so we were limited by, by ethanol, but methanol won't, won't knock. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, our uh, in, uh, research indicates that uh, decreasing the engine size is more effective than increasing the compression ratio beyond 11 and a half. 
that's really useful. Uh, following on that, uh, do you also see any potential weight reduction uh, potential from perhaps avoiding EGR cooling or downsizing those kind of systems? Yes, yeah, we don't need EGR. Uh, the EGR is a problem. We do actually uh, like to utilize the uh, internal EGR and light load for avoiding throttle losses. But a uh, heavy load, no EGR. So that's a uh, once again, directionally a uh, tremendous value because weight ends up being a, a, a parasitic load in terms of efficiency, obviously. Uh, any other questions? Well, I want to thank our, our great panel uh, now in this uh, early this morning. It's uh, really very informative. So, thank you, everybody. We're going to reconvene here at uh, 1 o'clock, but uh, enjoy your lunch and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you. Thank you.